You'd like to hear a new story? Oh, very well. Where shall we begin? The stronger the bard is, the more damage he can inflict with melee weapons. A high vitality will increase the bard's health, making him more difficult to defeat in battle. Luck has a subtle effect on many aspects of the bard's adventures. A high dexterity allows the bard to inflict greater damage with ranged weapons. Shopkeepers will offer significant discounts to the bard if he has high charisma. Rhythm allows the bard to play magical tunes with greater skill, enhancing the statistics of summoned creatures. Luck has a subtle effect on many aspects of the bard's adventures allows the bard to equip and use two-handed weapons. Allows the bard to fight with a dirk in one hand and a sword in the other. Allows the bard to equip and use a flail. Allows the bard to fight with a dirk in one hand and a sword in the other. The bard will automatically bash with his shield after blocking, stunning his enemy. A powerful charging attack which stuns enemies, used with a sword skill. A powerful ranged shot which passes through its target, used with a ranged skill. Gives the bard a chance to score a critical hit on his enemies, inflicting additional damage. The Bard gains bonus coins for any treasure he finds. It had come to this at last. One man, a poet and a rogue, with no friends to speak of, no one to mourn his passing, should it come to that. Even those beside him are no more boon companions than bond servants, summoned by sorcery and song as cold and indifferent to him as the light of a wandering star. And not that long ago. A simple man he was, with a quick wit and a sharp tongue, an eye for the lasses, and a talent for keeping one step ahead of the law, come to Houghton to play his tunes and make his way. He found himself standing outside the Drunken Rat, a public house owned by the widow Mary McCrary. The bard readied his instrument and prepared to ply his trade. Drunken lots, get off your backsides and kill it. I'll save you, fair damsel. Ah, oh, what a strapping man you are to be saving me from that wee beastie. I happened to be wandering by when I heard your cries over the rumbling of my empty belly. You aren't hers, are you? No, but aren't you the sweet one for asking? See? I've an idea. If you'd be willing to do a little job for me, I'd give you a good meal and a warm place to lay your head for the night. I'd be only too happy to handle anything you'd like to heave my way. Then it's a deal, for it's a wee rat problem I've got in me cellars, and if you could do away with them, I'd be ever so thankful. Rats, you say? In the cellar? How cliché of you, love. But I'll forgive you this once. You'll need a bigger sword than what you've got. 
in case you run into trouble. Oh, and uh, my sword is quite big enough to handle any troubles you might have. is not going to kill itself. Get down there and earn a meal for once. I don't know how to do that. Complete. All hail the bard, rat killer, and rodent bane, who has bravely made the cellars once again safe for buxom barmaids and wanton widows. Or has he? Ah! Ah! The bard, finding himself wreathed in flame, dashed up the stairs towards the safety of the tavern. Go at him with this. You better hope I've cooled off when I return, or you're next.
Boring. Move along. Who the hell are you? How'd you get down here? Look here, laddie. Don't be concerning yourself with such things right now. I'm here to help you with your rat problem. Any brute can swing a sword. If you really want to slay that hairy beastie, try playing this tune on that loot of yours. Go on, clear off out of it. I've no use for you. I'm not offering to go with you, laddie. I'm offering you a bit of song and magic that'll bring you back in one piece. Great. So now the rat gets dinner and a show. If it's so bloody powerful, use it yourself and save me the trouble. Would that I could. But I'm not a man of action like yourself. <laughs> so do yourself a favour and take a little charity when it's offered, my boy. Done. Show me what you got. Before you head down there and face that huge rat, I'd like to be sure that you know your business. Would you like me to teach you a few wee things that'll help you get the best of any foes you might encounter? I think I'm going to regret this. But I'll humour you, old man. Good job, lad. You already know how to attack, but let's talk about defending yourself. Press the defend button. Well, what are you on about? You're completely insane, aren't you? You know, I ran into this other guy once. He kept talking about mice I couldn't see. Now I'm blocking pretend blows. I hope you appreciate what I'm going through here and reward me sufficiently. That was great, boyo. You'll notice that instead of holding down the button, you'll have to time your defence to the enemy's attack. Of course I have to time it. How else am I going to block anything? Now, laddie, let's teach you how to play that loot of yours and make some magic. What? Does my name not mean anything to you? The Bard? Did you not see me summon that rat a few moments ago? Press the summon menu button. You're not listening to a word I'm saying, are you? You'll see several choices. These are the different types of beasties you'll eventually be able to summon. For now, let's summon that spider I taught you about. <laughs> That was useful, at least. Finally. This part is important, so listen up, laddie. The creatures that you summon aren't under your complete control, but they will try to do what you wish to the best of their ability. Try to give them orders using the command buttons. For example, press the aggressive button to make your little friend there become more aggressive. Attack! Ah, you're getting the hang of things now, aren't you, lad? You can experiment with different uses of the command buttons to develop your own strategies. Now, at times, you may want to get rid of a creature you've summoned. Simply go back into the same menu you've summoned him from and select him again. That's the way to get rid of an unwanted creature. Great. Does that trick work on you as well? Good luck against the rat, my boy. In the future, I'm going to have to learn how to dodge these mysterious old man types. All hail the bard, rat killer, and rodent bane, who's bravely made the How about you tell the story and leave the sarcastic patronizing to me, okay?
run away again, did you? Go back to where you came from and leave the fighting to those who've got the guts for it. I've plenty of guts, milady. Which is why you needn't trouble yourself about that rat any longer. You mean it's dead? Oh, thank you. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Twas the least I could do for a damsel in distress. Now, how about that meal? Why don't you wait while I fix you some leftovers? Oh, and your room in the back is almost ready. Having spent a lonely night in a somewhat uncomfortable and shabby bed, the bard awoke the next morning in a foul humour. You should go speak with that strange friend of yours. He was starting to scare away my regular customers. I had to chase him out. Yeah, 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 so you killed a rat. What do you want? A medal? And then the bard looted the chest which contained the widow's most precious... Wait a minute. Did I read that properly? You're stealing from her? I wouldn't call it stealing, exactly. I mean, people leave all kinds of things in chests, and they never seem to object when I help myself. Think of it as a public service. I mean, who knows how cluttered these chests might become if I didn't do my part to help clean them out. In hindsight, I'm surprised it took the bard this long to get his hands on Mary's chest. You killed it! You killed it! The fire-breathing rat in the cellar was the best practical joke we had! Now what are we supposed to do to entertain ourselves? Very impressive, young man. I wish I had the guts to stand up to the wife the way you stood up to that rat. But of course, she's a bit more vicious. What did I tell you, lad? You hooked him and cooked him. Thanks to that song you gave me. You're welcome, boy -o. And should you be looking for another one like it, find the trow in the fairy haunt woods. But keep your wits about you. They're devilish clever, the trow. With magic by the pound, and not a single scrap of honesty. Do I look like a village idiot to you? I've had more than my fill of barbarian hordes, evil wizards, cities locked in eternal winter, and any other type of adventure you care to throw my way. There's too much danger and not enough profit to go around. Come now, boy. What's a little danger when compared to power? Didn't that little trick I showed you help you get in good with the Widow McCrary? If it's a skin you're worried about, I will wee trinket here that'll keep you safe from harm. This amulet was made by a powerful sorceress. It can summon her spirit to heal your wounds in battle. 
You'll need adder stones to provide the necessary mystical power. If you like, you can even use multiple stones for even greater effect. Dear laddie, try it out. Who is she? She's beautiful. I'll take the amulet, old man. And, uh, what were you saying about her trail? Find him in the Fairy Haunt Woods. Bannerfeet be his name. He can teach you magic enough to impress any lass. Welcome back. What can I get for you? What about this one? Quite a strong drink you've got. Nice. Nice. I hope you enjoyed that. Welcome back. What can I get for you? Get to the good part. You've come looking for my bow, and haven't you? Of course you have. But it's gone he is, for he's the one. The chosen one, who free the fair princess from cruel bondage. And what do you suppose that means to a poor old woman like me? Why? Everything, that's what. For he's promised to come back, my organ, and take me away from this awful place and give me a proper house with glass in the windows, floors of wood, and a larder so full we'll never know hunger again. So... When you see him, tell him his mother loves him.
What do you want? If you're a thief, you'll get nothing from me, for I've only these old bones and a heavy heart. Sorry, Grandad. I didn't expect to find you here, or frighten you when I did. I'm only looking out for a bit of silver to line my pockets. Of course you are, young sir, and I happen to know how you might find some. For it's a cruel bugbear that's been keeping the farmers from observing their rituals. And us farmers have to perform our rituals at the Houghton Cairn. Without them, the crops won't grow and the weans go hungry. I know what it means to be hungry, and worse it is for a child. So, a fair price for a fair piece of work, and it's a bargain. Ah, bless you, my boy. I knew you for a game lad the moment I saw you. As for the bugbear, you'll find him in the cairn. When you're done with him, come back here and we'll pay you what we can. The bard, having slain the random wolf, found that it had digested not only the contents of a small treasury, but also various household goods. Well, wait, am I, am I reading that correctly? This can't be right. You'd be surprised. I find all kinds of things inside these beasties. Do I ever tell you about the time I killed this rat and out popped an entire chest? Well, I'm just going to skip those passages in the future. What? That's a major source of income. You cheap good-for-nothing horses. <clears throat> And so the bard continued on his journey. <laughs> 